second graders, Miss Diorio here from Citizenship Academy with Module 7, Lesson 24 today. So what we're going to do today is a continuation of yesterday. Yesterday we started taking our measurement data and putting it into a table so it was more organized. Today we're still going to do that, but we're going to learn a new way of graphing our data. This is called a line plot. So make sure you have something to write with today so you can practice making line plots with me. You're also going to need a centimeter ruler. If you have a ruler like this, that works. If not, see if you can find your centimeter ruler that we made towards the beginning of the year. We're going to be measuring in centimeters instead of inches today. All right, go pause those things. Come back when you're in. And we'll get started. Okay, we're going to start off with some subtraction problems. What I want you to try and do is find the difference between these problems using some kind of mental math strategy. That could be adding up and counting on to 10. That could be a compensation strategy. Think about it for a couple minutes um, and then write down your answer, whatever you think your answer is, and we'll talk about it. So I want you to pause, think about it, and solve in your head using a mental math strategy, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Got it? What'd you get? Good. So what I saw in this problem that six, I can get 16 to 20, so I can add 4. And if I do that, I have to add 4 to 28. So I get 28 minus 20, and I get a total of 8. Just using compensation for that one. You could use any mental math strategy, though. All right, try this one. 34 minus 4. Again, using mental math. Pause and solve. Write down your answer and then we'll go over it. Good. I got 32. So for this one, we're just subtracting the ones. So if we take four ones away from four ones, we end up with three tens or 30. Awesome job. All right, 44 minus 16. Whew. This one's a little bit trickier. Solve mentally. Write down your answer. Pause and come back when you're ready to go over it. Twenty-eight. Good. So what I would do for this one is the same thing that I did for the first one. I would use the compensation strategy. Sixteen to its next twenty. I'm adding four. I'm adding sixteen to its next ten is twenty. So I'm adding four. Whatever I do to one in subtraction, I have to do the other. So. 44 becomes 48, so I get 48 minus 20 is 28. Whew. All right, try this one. Again, try it using a mental math strategy. Did you get 15? Nice job. Again, with this one, we're just subtracting the ones. Whew, this one's a little bit tricky. Good. So for this one, I used my answer from the last one. We need 20 minus 5 was 15. So if I add 1, I know 21 minus 5 is going to be 16. Awesome work. Okay. Grab your paper and your pencil. Let's try this problem. It says, Mike, Dennis, and April all collected coins from a parking lot. When they counted their coins, they had 24 pennies, 15 nickels, Seven dimes and two. And I'm going to just search for us. Okay, just so we have them. Okay. Oop. Sorry, guys. Pennies into one cup and there are other coins in another. Which cup has more coins? How many more? Okay. They had 24 pennies. And that's in one cup. And there are 15 seven dimes and two quarters are in another cup. Which cup has more coins? How many more? I'm noticing this is a two-step problem. We need to figure out which cup has more coins, and then second step, we need to figure out how many more. What do we need to figure out first, though? Good. So we know there's 24 pennies in one cup. We don't know how many coins are in the other cup. We know that 15 plus 7 plus 2 is going to give us that total, though. So for how many coins are in that other cup? Got it? 
So we get 24, oops, both cups have 24 coins. So does either, does any cup have more coins than the other or are they equal? Good, they are equal cups. So no more in one cup than another, they are equal. Nice job. All right, so this is a tally chart that I took from my house of the handspan measurements. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so what we can do with this data, instead of having it in a table, we can put it in what we call a line graph. Ooh, this is what, it looks like a number line. And our data, if we go back, goes from three inches to eight inches. So I'm gonna cross off the first couple numbers and just go from three to eight, since we don't have any numbers that start at zero, one, or two. So we're literally just taking our number line and we're taking how many people have three inches. So two people, have three inches. And then I'm just graphing, putting X's for the amount of people. Each X represents one tally mark. Each, rep each X represents one tally, let me go back to our graph. Each re X represents one tally mark from our graph here. There's our graph. And I'm gonna plot it on a line plot and each X is one tally mark or one person and one hand span. Do you see that? So basically I took my graph, I put it on a number line, and I made X's going straight up to show how many, how many inches in, is in each hand span. What information can you see from this line plot? I want you to pause and talk to someone at home about what information you can see in this line plot. Good, so I'll tell you what I'm noticing. I'm noticing that most people, or the most people, had a five inch hand span. No people had a seven inch hand span. Hand span. And only one person had an eight inch hand span. So that was probably the least before seven. So we can find a lot of information out when we graph it in a line plot. Because you can very easily see who had the most, who had the least. Okay. Here's your task for today. We're gonna measure how long our shoes are. Today we're gonna be using centimeters instead of inches, so make sure you have your centimeter ruler. If, when you're doing this at home, you can measure as many shoes as you want in your house. Just make sure when you're measuring, you want to line up your endpoints. You're starting at zero, and measuring over. You can't start in the middle. Remember to line up your end of your shoe and measure over. So you're gonna make a graph of your own shoe measures. I made my own. These are the measurements of my shoe, but you're gonna make yours. 10 shoe measurements, okay? Then you're gonna put it in a graph. Remember when you graph, you're just doing tally marks. You don't, tell, you don't have to tell me mom has a 26 inch shoe, dad has a 20 inch shoe, my brother has a 10 inch shoe, whatever, 10 centimeter shoe. You are doing just tally marks, okay? Just graphing the data, getting some measurements. Once your data is graphed, you're gonna put it on a line plot. Now for my line plot, it doesn't start till 19 centimeters. That's my smallest measurement. So that's where I'm gonna start on my number line. I don't need any of these numbers, but I can start at 19. Now, I'm gonna take my measurements. 19 has one, 20 has three, 21 has three, 22 has two, and then I skip a bunch and go up to 26. So let's plot that. Remember, each X is one tally mark. Each X is one shoe. And it looks like that. Now we took the data from our graph and we turned it into a line plot. And you're gonna do the exact same thing with the shoes in your house. Pretty cool, right? Then, for your problem set today, what you're gonna be doing is taking data that I give you and turning it into a line plot. Again, same thing, each tally mark is a person. Each tally mark is a measurement. In this case, each tally mark is a pencil. So I'm seeing one for two measure, one for two inches, two for three inches, five, six, five inches has seven, Six inches has eight, 
7 inches has 4, and 8 inches has 1. And that's our line plot. Just taking the data from the table, turning it into a line plot. I can't wait to see your shoe measurements for your line plot and your other line plots that you create during this lesson. Nice job.